Hello and welcome to another edition of Health Solutions with Sean and Janet Needham, where Team Needham discusses everything healthcare. I'm your host, Sean Needham, and I am streaming live from the Moses Lake, actually, from the Team Needham abode. And I am super excited to have pharmacist, fellow rogue pharmacist, Ben Fuchs on our show today to discuss sunscreen. It's coming up to that time where we're being told to wear sunscreen. We're going to talk about if that's necessary and what are the good good sunscreens and what are the bad sunscreens. So, Ben, welcome to our show. Greetings, Sean. You, you sure know how to pick a controversial subject. Yeah. Well, speaking of controversial, I heard you have a viral a TikTok <laughs> video that went viral yeah. because of the controversy. So tell us a little bit about that. Well, here's the deal. First of all, let's get our nomenclature correct. They used to say sunscreens and sunblocks. And I love that distinction because a sunblock, the, for, the term sunblock referred to something that blocked the sun, sun's rays, reflected the sun's rays. And a sunscreen sort of manipulated the photonic energy. They called it screening. So a sunscreen was typically something that would uh, change the electronic nature of photons. And a sunblock would just reflect them. And for, based on that criteria, that, that distinction, it kind of made sense how a block would, number one, have more provide more protection because it would block everything. Uh, and it would also be uh, less toxic because it didn't have a the same kind of electronic nature as a screen. A screen works by manipulating the electronic nature of the photon, the photonic energy, the pho- you know electrical or photonic nature, either way. So... This distinction of sunscreen, sunblock, I liked it, but they've changed it. Now they call them physical sunscreens and chemical sunscreens, or sometimes you'll hear the term organic sunscreens and inorganic sunscreens. Okay, so now we get our term straight. We can no longer call them, or we don't don't call them any longer sunblocks and sunscreens. We say physical, which is the same as inorganic or mineral, versus organic or chemical sunscreens. So that's our main distinction. For our conversation here today, we'll call them uh, we'll call them physical sunscreens and chemical sunscreens. Okay, the chemical okay. sunscreens were formerly referred to as sunscreens, and these are the as I say ingredients that manipulate photonic energy. As such, they have a couple problems associated with them. No, a few problems. Number one, physical uh, chemical sunscreens will either block either UVA or UVB. Now the sun's quick digression, sun rays come out in two forms, actually three, but two major forms called UVA and UVB. UVB is known as the burning ray and it makes up maybe 10% or so of the sun's rays. And UVA is the aging ray and that goes deeper into the dermis, into the connective tissue and that's most of the sun's rays, maybe 90% or so of the sun's rays. The predominant sunscreens, chemical sunscreens, only block UVB. And as such, as being UVB blockers, that creates a little issue. Because now the signal to get out of the sun, which is burning, is lost. And you're going to stay out in the sun longer and contact more UVA. So by using the UVB, you run the risk of staying out in the sun longer, getting more aging effects or UVA effects. So then they say, well, there's, there's other chemicals you can use that block UVA. That's true. And predominantly, these are, known, these, these are known as benzones. And as you can tell, being a, a fellow chemist and pharmacist from the word benzone, you're dealing with a molecule that can be quite toxic. In fact, just a couple of weeks ago, you may remember or you may have heard that um, they found benzene in some of these sun protection products because benzones can get broken down or, or, or similar to benzenes, benzene being a, a very powerful carcin- carcinogen. So the benzones, which block UVA, are extremely toxic. The, even, the, even the UVB blockers like octomethoxycinamate and octocrylene and octosalicylate, these are also cytotoxic. They also have a certain amount of cellular toxicity, but the, uh, the UVA blockers are over-the-top toxic. That's number one. So you've got, you've got a problem with UVB blockers because you're going to stay on the sun longer, act, uh, contacting more UVA. Number two, uh, if you throw in a UVA blocker, now you're dealing with extra toxicity. Number three, the chemical sunscreens are known as gender benders. They're endocrine-disrupting chemicals. They have estrogenic properties. And as I know, I'm sure you know, these days we have a big issue with something called xenoestrogens, mm-hmm. these foreign estrogens. In fact, 
Um, in Hawaii, they've actually banned the use of these chemical sunscreens because they don't want the gender bending effects and the toxic effects of these chemicals in the water. Chemicals are toxic to the coral in addition to being toxic to cells. So you've got toxicity, you've got mostly UVB blocker. If you throw in a UVA blocker, you've got uh, extra toxicity on top of everything else. Uh, SPF, sun protection factor, is a measurement of how long you can stay out in the sun without burning. And it doesn't tell you anything about UVA block. So you can wear a UV, uh, SPF of 30, of 60, of 90, but you don't have any idea of how much UVA protection you're getting. There's no metric for UVA protection. So you may not be getting any UVA protection. You may be getting a modicum of UVA protection. You really have no idea, no idea what you're getting. And the real issue is with all these problems associated with the chemical or, if you like, organic sunscreens, you have this wonderful alternative, which is the inorganic sunscreens, or if you prefer physical sunscreens or mineral sunscreens, formerly known as sunblocks, which, number one, block everything. They block UVA and UVB. Number two, they're non-toxic. Particularly, one form of organic of uh, inorganic sunscreen called zinc oxide, which is not only a complete block, not only blocks UVA and UVB, but it, it's a healing agent. Not only is it non-toxic, but you can actually put it on your sunburn and have it heal your sunburn. As you know, you have in your pharmacy, I'm sure, zinc oxide. It's a, a, a tried and true pharmacy remedy, zinc oxide. For the life of me, I cannot figure out why anybody would go for a chemical or an uh, organic sunscreen when you have an option that blocks everything and that heals the skin. And I forgot to mention, it uh, doesn't break down in the sun the way the chemical sunscreens do. The chemical sunscreens photolyse. They break down in the sun. So you may have an SPF of 15 or 20 or 30. By the time the sun hits that SPF or the hits that chemical sunscreen, you don't know what you got. That You don't have that problem with zinc oxide. So zinc oxide is non-toxic. Zinc oxide is stable. Zinc oxide heals. You say, why would anybody use an uh, organic uh, chemical sunscreen when you have this wonderful option of zinc oxide? By the way, titanium dioxide is another inorganic or mineral or physical sunscreen and it's good but i don't it's not as good as zinc oxide because it doesn't have the same healing properties as zinc oxide so zinc oxide heals the skin it blocks everything it's stable and on top of all of that zinc is a mineral that's stored in the skin it's part of the skin's natural healing chemistry zinc when you get a cut zinc is mobilized to that cut to turn on protein synthesis at the genetic level Zinc is an epigenetic factor that upregulates genes that are associated with collagen production and healing. So to me, it's just a freaking no-brainer. So you say, why would anybody use the chemicals? Well, here's the reason. Number one, they're ubiquitous. They're everywhere because they're cheap. Zinc oxide is not cheap. Zinc oxide is not easy to work with. The chemical sunscreens are very easy to work with. You can just add them extemporaneously to any formula. Zinc oxide, you've got to have a, an intelligently formulated product because Zinc oxide is tricky to work with. Titanium is a little, it's still tricky to work with, not quite as bad as zinc oxide. So the chemical sunscreens are everywhere. The chemical sunscreens are cheap. The chemical sunscreens give you super high SPFs and people, uh, they, they really misunderstand SPF, you know, more is better kind of thing. It doesn't always work that way. SPF, by the way, is a measurement of how much longer you can stay out in the sun without burning. So for a fair guy like you, you probably burn in 15 minutes or 20 minutes or so. If you wear an SPF of, 10, of, of 20 and you burn in 15 or 20 minutes, now you'll burn in 20 times 15 minutes or 300 minutes, right? Well, 300 minutes is five hours. Who the heck is out in the sun for five hours? And if you are out in the sun for five hours, uh, reapply and use a small, a lower SPF and you won't have to interact with as much chemistry. So for a lot of reasons, people are uh, using the chemical sunscreens because they're cheap, they're ubiquitous, and they don't understand the nature of SPF or the nature of sun protection. But if you do start to understand sun protection, it's well worth the extra cost. And as far as uh, the one main problem with zinc oxide, uh, people say it makes them white. There are plenty of formulations that don't make you white, including formulations that I make in my pharmacy that don't make you white. So zinc oxide is the way to go always. Now, if you're if you're like on a cruise or you're playing tennis or you're at the golf club, a country club and you're golfing and you don't have an option, use a chemical sunscreen. OK, use it, but wash it off your face as or your body or wherever you have it as soon as you get as soon as you get in from the sun. 
If you're not in the sun, you don't need to wear a chemical sunscreen. You're just introducing chemistry to your body. And by the way, there are measurable amounts of sunscreens in the blood, in the plasma, in breast milk, in various fluids of the body. So the sunscreens, which are very lipophilic, the chemical sunscreens, which are very fat soluble, make it through the skin into the bloodstream. So there's a lot of reasons to avoid these things. And then the last thing I'll tell you, the best sun protection is nutrition internal nutrition and on the on the negative side which you want to stay away from fried fats are especially problematic for the skin as well as for the intestine by the way so staying away from fried and processed fats is very important for keeping your skin healthy and less sensitive to the sun and number two pigments blues and greens and reds and yellows all of these colors that protect the plants from the sun you know plants are in the sun all day long they never get skin cancer they don't get wrinkles they thrive in the sun because they've got these polyphenols these these flavonoids these colored molecules that act to dampen the photonic energy well when we eat the reds and the blues and the greens and the yellows they get processed in our digestive system and they get into the blood and they get stored in the skin where they will protect our skin from the sun and the same thing goes is true about antioxidants like vitamin c vitamin A, the aforementioned zinc, all of these can uh, can uh, deposit in the skin upon ingestion and give you protection from the sun. So that is the best way to protect, and omega-3 fats, I forgot about that, that's also very sun protective. So making sure you're eating correctly, making sure you're staying away from problem foods, making sure you're supplementing, those are the best ways to protect your skin from the sun. And if you need some topical protection, go with zinc oxide. That being said, the sun is your friend. Right. The sun's awesome. We have this collective heliophobia that has people terrified of the dome lights in their cars, let alone the sun. You know, people are just running in from the sun. They're terrified about getting sun uh, uh, sun on their faces or on their bodies. Well, it turns out that this UVB, the burning ray, is also the vitamin D ray. Yeah. Right? And we have right. a big problem with vitamin D deficiencies. And while Healthcare professionals who don't understand chemistry will say, oh, you can get your vitamin D from supplements and you can get your vitamin D from food. Uh-uh. The best vitamin D is the solar vitamin D that hits the, the solar rays that hit the cholesterol in your skin and turn it into vitamin D. That form of vitamin D doesn't need to get activated the same way that oral vitamin D does. Oral vitamin D needs to be activated in the liver and the kidney. If you have, fat, if you have fatty liver disease or kidney disease, you may not be activating your vitamin D that you're taking orally. Uh, or supplementally. You don't have to worry about that with solar vitamin D. So don't let any healthcare professional tell you, oh, you can just get your vitamin D from food or supplements. It's not the same as the natural vitamin D that's formed as a response to uh, the solar solar interaction with cholesterol in the skin. So vitamin, uh, the sun's your friend. You want to get out in the sun. You want to have as much of your skin covered with the sun. It's not enough just to go walk the dog with a t-shirt. You want to be laying out in the in your backyard in your bikini or less, you know, don't freak out your neighbors, you know, be respectful, <laughs> but, you know, just get as much of your skin contacted with the, with the, with the sun, and then make sure that you're supplementing with uh, solar protective nutrients, antioxidants, as well as pigments, topically go with zinc oxide. If you have to go with the chemical sunscreen, get it off your skin as soon as you come in from the sun. Well, I, I love your wisdom and knowledge about all things skincare. I mean, you, you are just Thank amazing you. and you never see, cease to amaze me and teach Thank me. You. And one thing I want to go back to is that, you know, these chemical sunscreens and really even for that matter, mineral sunscreens, sunblock versus um, versus sunscreens, um, they're really only about what, Ben, 50, 60, 70 years old, maybe? Probably. What are we talking about? Yeah, yeah maybe the six, fifth, nineteen sixties copper tone. That first, the first one that came out was like right. that copper I mean, tone thing. Yeah, they're not that old. They're not been around the fifties or sixties, I think, when they started to come out. So what did we do to protect ourselves from the sun a hundred years ago? For one thing, we did sunblock type things. We wore clothes. If we if yeah. we we're going to get too much sun, hats. we wore hats. Yeah, that kind of thing. Us. But we still got sun. And you're talking about vitamin D, but there are so many things that the sun does that we don't even know that That's it's right. Does. That's you right. Know, serotonin. Serotonin, all, yeah. All kinds of neurotransmitters that we don't even know. That's right. So getting outside in the sun is, is beneficial. And if you think... Don't burn. I mean, I don't, just don't burn. Everybody loves the sun. We feel yeah. better when we're out in the sun. Right. You're right. healthier when you're out in the sun. There's something called seasonal affective disorder. People don't get yes. enough sun. Where you're at, probably not, I don't know if it's in Moses Lake, but in Seattle, 
you know, on the West yeah. Coast, right? Seasonal affective disorder. People are depressed when there's not when they're not out in the sun. We love the sun. We feel better when we're out in the sun. Don't burn. And right. make sure you're getting your nutrition so that you're so, you could be protected from some of the effects of aging. And by the way, building a strong skin barrier is extremely important, not just for sun protection, but also for protecting your skin from dryness, protecting your skin from other environmental assaults. And the, the barrier of the skin, the stratum corneum barrier, is a wonderful place to work to keep the entire organ healthy, using things like niacin and uh, topical retinol and topical vitamin C, fat-soluble vitamin C, using exfoliation strategies. These are wonderful ways to strengthen the skin barrier. And in addition to using your pigments and your internal nutritional supplements, you'll make your skin stronger and more resilient and more resistant to the damage that can accrue from, from uh, solar radiation. Absolutely. And one thing I'd like to mention too, or I want your opinion on, you mentioned it really quickly, but there's been some thoughts about zinc oxide versus titanium dioxide and titanium dioxide being one of the sunblocks, inorganic sunblocks, and titanium dioxide being um, toxic. Can you talk about that versus zinc yeah, oxide? Yeah, they're not toxic, but some of the new formulas are nanophilized. They're in, they, they make them in very, very small particles, and uh, it's thought that some of these small particles can enter into the bloodstream, so that can be a problem. Titanium itself, and there's no titanium in your body. Unless you have like a, you know, a knee replacement or something like that. But there's titanium is not a mineral that the body uses, not an element that the body uses for any chemistry, which is why I prefer zinc oxide. Yeah, and the right. only, the only downside with zinc oxide is that it's pricey, but you know what? You're worth it. Your skin's yeah. worth it. So to me, the, the price differential between titanium dioxide and zinc oxide or a chemical sunscreen uh, and zinc oxide it's not that big a deal because your skin is the largest organ of your body and you want it healthy and you don't want to introduce toxicity not only on your to your skin uh, topically but internally because we know that these chemicals uh, these chemical sunscreens go through the sur this, through the skin and they make it into the bloodstream and there's measurable amounts of these things in as i say plasma and breast milk and other bodily fluids so you have healthy skin, Ben. It's it's obvious. You're a few I've been years doing older. A long time. <laughs> You're a few years older than me. So tell us. Do you That's what I do? The secrets in the fats. The yeah, secret to me. healthy skin is in the fats. Fatty vitamins, fatty nutrients like the pigments that we just talked about, and essential fatty acids. Those are that's the secret to healthy, beautiful skin. Nobody should need a moisturizer. You know, when I do my talks on the skin, I, I say, how many people have dry skin? Everybody raises their hand. Dry skin is probably the most ubiquitous skin condition that uh, anybody has in this country, probably and around the world. Yet, Sean, we sell uh, 10 to 14 billion, billion with a B, billion dollars a year in moisturizing creams every year. People have moisturizers in their in their bathroom cabinet, in their locker uh, locker at the gym, in their uh, kitchen, in their office, in their purse, in their car. And, you know, they have moisturizers everywhere, but everybody has dry skin. Why is that? It's because dry skin is a nutritional issue, just like sensitive skin is a nutritional issue, just like skin that burns readily can be protected by nutrition. So if you have dry skin or if you have a skin condition, focus on fats, particularly essential fatty acids, toxicity that gets into the bloodstream through a leaky gut. Toxicity that gets into the bloodstream through a leaky gut can result in eczemas, it can result in psoriasis, it can result in uh, uh, rosacea, it can result in forms of acne. Make sure that you're using nutrients that stabilize the growth of skin cells. When skin cells grow too fast, they can cause plugs, and that's one of the causes of acne. When sebacytes, are, which are a, a type of skin cell, the, skin, the cells that make sebum, when they pro hyperproliferate, they can make the skin oily. Cortisol or stress hormone can make the skin oily. Hypothyroidism can make the skin dry. So working with the hormones, working with the digestive system, working with nutritional supplementation, treating the skin, Sean, like it's a fully fledged organ of the body. We sometimes sometimes think of the skin as a canvas or as an envelope on the outside of the body. Like there's our body and then something's covering it up. No, the skin, everybody says, and everybody knows the skin is the body's largest organ. 
It's like your liver or your heart or your spleen or your lungs or your brain or your intestine. It deserves the same kind of respect and the same kind of health treatment that any other organ of the body does. And that, to me, as a pharmacist who practices uh, nutritional pharmacy, that means good nutrition internally, staying away from problem foods, whether it's processed oils or, or fried fats, as we said earlier, or allergenic foods, foods that you have uh, allergic reactions to, lectins and beans and dairy and eggs. So many people have the reactive skin because of the foods they're eating. So staying away from problem foods, using nutritional supplementation, and as far as topical skincare goes, the best and the most important topical ingredients are going to be nutrients. That's why with my True Skin Health products, they're topical nutritional supplements. Vitamin C, fat soluble. Uh, vitamin A in its retinol or retinoic acid form. Plant-derived minerals. Vitamins D and E and A and K. All of these nutrients do for your skin what they do for the inside of your body. They support growth. They suppress uh, sensitivities and immune reactions. They're important for the production of various connective tissue fibers and uh, goos, polysaccharides like hyaluronic acid, for example, and collagen and elastin. Topical nutrients are by far the most important skincare ingredients you could ever use. And then make sure that you're exercising your skin. I saw that wonderful picture of you, Sean, by the way. Man, did you look good. You were, you were looking good, buddy. I don't know. There's one where you're like a bodybuilder, bro. I didn't know that <laughs> about you. And I'm like, my boy, Sean has been in the gym, you know, but here's the thing. Your skin needs to exercise too. And that's what exfoliation is. Exfoliation is taking your skin to the gym. And that means disturbing the stratum corneum to initiate the growth of new skin cells, as well as the production of connective tissue fibers. And after you exfoliate, just like after you come home from the gym, when you come home from the gym, you want to be doing your creatine, your B vitamins, your branch chain aminos, your whey protein, your nutrients, essentially your minerals. Likewise with the skin, after you exfoliate or take your skin to the gym, as I say, or exercise your skin, you want to drive those topical nutrients into your skin and your skin will suck up those nutrients like a dry sponge sucks up water. And it's the combination of exfoliation, topical uh, nutrients, especially fat-soluble vitamin C and retinol, and internal nutrition that's going to give your skin that youthful, healthy, beautiful glow that we use Botox and we use fillers and we use makeup to imitate. I say, why imitate? Why simulate healthy, beautiful skin when you can stimulate healthy, beautiful skin. I, I agree 100%. And I will tell you, um, you know, my wife started, Janet started using your products, True Treatment Systems, and changing her diet a few years ago. And, and she's Norwegian. So she used to not be able to tolerate any kind of sun at all. And now she can tolerate sun and her skin looks, it looked healthy already because she just wouldn't go out in the sun, but she can go out in the sun and her skin looks healthier than ever. It's, awesome. it's amazing. Um, Here, you know, here's a little trick for your listeners and, and for uh, your uh, pharmacy customers. One of the best nutrients to protect your skin from the sun are eye vitamins. You know, Occuvite and, and um, uh, the various brands, the various formulas to protect your eyes. They protect your eyes from the sun. They'll also protect your skin from the sun. So if you're going out on a cruise or you're going, you know, uh, going on vacation somewhere where you're going to be on, laying on the beach and get, getting a lot of sun, take your eye vitamins with you and things like N-acetylcysteine and zinc and taurine and vitamin C, selenium and vitamin E, which you'll find in these eye vitamins, lutein and zeaxanthine will also protect your skin from the sun. And um, vitamin A is an eye vitamins. That's when I think vitamin about it. A, absolutely. Yeah. Carotenes yeah. like the, the beta carotene and zeaxanthine and lutein and such and vitamin A. Yeah, these are all sun protective and they'll protect your eyes from the sun from things like macular degeneration, for example. But they'll also protect your skin from the sun. And, and, you know, talking about the skin as an organ, I think it's interesting how we always and you kind of alluded to this, but, you know, we do it with heart health, gut health and 
all these things we try to compartmentalize that your heart is separate from your gut or yeah. your skin is separate from your gut. Yeah. And we try to compartmentalize this yeah. as humans or as scientists. Yeah. And to tell you the truth, they're all related. If you don't have healthy skin, you're not going to have a healthy body. Exactly. You healthy gut, you're not going to have a healthy body. Yeah, I mean, exactly. You, know, you can't have heart. healthy skin if you don't have a healthy body. You can't have a healthy heart if you don't have a healthy body. No, you can't. This, the reductionistic idea of separating out the organs, exactly. that's from the Middle Ages. You know, that's from the 1700s and 1800s. Today, we know everything's connected. It's yeah. all linked. And it all starts, by the way, at the intestine. If you're sick in any way, shape, or form, and you want to do one thing, focus on your intestinal health, especially for the skin. There's a major relationship between intestinal health and skin diseases. Absolutely. So um, as we wind this podcast up, um, Ben, I'm going to share our website where they can order some of these products. Um, you talked a little bit about um, tell us about the truth trifecta. The truth trifecta is three products. Uh, that's why it's called the trifecta that we found accidentally when you worked, when you uh, mixed the three together, you had an incredible plumping effect on your skin. One is a plant derived mineral spray. We call it our biomimetic mineral mist it has a few other things in it, but the base is plant derived minerals. Our se uh, the second product is our high hyaluronic mineral hydrator, which is our plant derived minerals plus hyaluronic acid and some vitamin C. And our third is our flagship product, which is our transdermal C serum made with almost 80% fat-soluble vitamin C, which is a ridiculously high number. We found that when you mix the three together, you get an incredible plumping effect that is dramatically visible almost instantly, especially effective for plumping the lips, but also for plumping fine lines and wrinkles. And it works so fast that we decided to sell the three uh, as a system and we call it our truth trifecta. And I think if somebody wants to start anywhere with skincare, those are the first three products to start with. Thank you. I appreciate that, Sean. And Ben, as we wrap this podcast up, what do you have a passion for? I have a passion for being better every day, for learning something new every day, for making myself better at life every day, for making myself a better human citizen on planet Earth every day and helping spread the word about the power and the gospel of good nutrition, of good mental and emotional health, and of spiritual connection. Because at the end of the day, I believe... Our spiritual disconnection is what leads to our mental and emotional dissatisfaction and our, our poor physical health. So spiritually, working spiritually, mentally, emotionally, and physically every day in every way, getting better and better. I love it. And tell us if anybody has any questions. Uh, they can email me personally, and I, I love answering emails. Ben at KSCO.com. K for King, S for Sam, C for Cat. O for Oscar. They can also check out my podcast, The Bright Side, and my skincare podcast for estheticians and professionals called The Rogue Pharmacist. Go figure. I also have a YouTube channel, Your Skin Matters. If you search on YouTube under Your Skin Matters, you'll get hundreds of videos that I've done. If you just Google my name and put in a search engine, Pharmacist Ben Fuchs, you'll get all kinds of good stuff. Truth Treatment Systems, Ben Fuchs, Rogue Pharmacist. Thank you, Sean. <laughs> yeah, and hang on. Hang on for a minute after the podcast. I want to chat with you a little bit after the podcast. So okay. um, thank you listeners and viewers for tuning into Health Solutions with Sean and Janet Needham. Thank you, Ben, as always. I love your wisdom and your knowledge. You've helped us to realize our goal, which is to educate and empower individuals to take charge of their own health. So don't miss out Thursday, our midweek podcast, 8 a.m. to 9 a.m. with Jesse Ewell. Um, he's going to be talking about building, a health, building healthy habits in our lifestyle. You don't miss out on that. Health Solutions with Sean and Janet Needham. Thank you.